Hey everyone, how's everyone doing? Um, I posted the link to the um, the meeting minutes. Um, please add yourself into attendance. Um, I'm going to be facilitating today's meeting. I think uh, one of the main things we're going to be doing today is we're going to have the Falco demo. Hi, Brandon. This is Lakshmi. Hey, Lakshmi. Thank you, Justin, for helping describe. Uh, I think we need one more scribe. If anyone wants to volunteer for that, that would be great. I'll try and scribe if uh, you can drop the link in the channel again. All right, thank you, Michael. All right, I'll, I put the, the link again in the chat. I'm not sure whether those that just joined were able to see the previous one. Um, please go in and then add yourself to the attendance. Um, Michael, do you know if um, Chris is going to be giving the uh, Falco demo today? Uh, I am guessing she's not going to. She's uh, moving down from Seattle to San Francisco. Okay. So I guess we'll push that to next week then. There is um, some things I wouldn't mind talking about in regards to Falco and our annual review that's coming up. So if you would like some perspective on that. I'd be happy to talk about that uh, a little bit in that time slot. Okay. Yeah, let's do that then. All right. We seem to have a lot of people on the call, but very few on the list. So please add yourself and um, let's start off with check ins. Lakshmi? Yeah, I, I don't have uh, any update for the meeting. I'm just here as an observer. Okay, great. Um, next on the list is um, Justin Carmack. Um, we had a kind of, we had a cross um, registry kind of signing and scan and other kind of security interest. Great meeting last week. And things going on with kind of these <clears throat> cross project working groups on things like signing. There's another lot of work going on with CNAB. So if anyone is interested and hasn't got the details of when the meetings are and things, please ping me. All right, sounds good. All right, next into this, um, Santiago. Uh, hey, uh, I'm just... Uh, Joining in this time because I wanted to pick up the supply chain work. Uh, I spoke to, with uh, Sarah Allen uh, about what were the next immediate steps, but I also wanted the broader community to be sure or like on board on how we're going to do this operationally. All right, let's let's add that to the agenda today then. That's oh well. Okay. All right, uh, Martin. Hello for me. I don't have anything in particular to, I don't have an update. All right. Um, Mike Brown. Hi, I'm new to the group. Um, I'm Mike Brown. I, I work at Coinbase on infrastructure security. I've been following uh, the work for a while, but I uh, thought I would join because we're trying to address a lot of the same issues that you all are. Cool. And, um, we have a recently um, created a new members page. So let me link that in the chat and then please feel free to check that out or reach out to any of us. 
Thanks. Um, Justin Capos. Great, yeah. Uh, I've mostly been dealing with things related to uh, the OPA assessment, tough graduation, things related with Intoto. Cool. Um, Michael, do you see? Yep, uh, I've been working on the annual review for Falco, which is going to be on the next COC meeting on October 15th. Uh, and then as part of that, uh, kind of reviewing if we're ready to move to incubation uh, or make the request to move to incubation. Um, I'm happy to talk about that later on the call, as I said. Uh, and one of the things that I'd also like to discuss is um, help with due diligence. And if anyone has, uh, when we make that proposal, usually with to move to incubation, usually what's going to happen is um, the TOC will ask for due diligence and usually a SIG can do that due diligence for the TOC. Um, so we can talk about that uh, later on the call. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Michael. Um, Ash? Uh, so I've been working on the OPA security assessment. Uh, there is a PR up for it, number 275. Uh, and also yesterday we presented the assessment uh, with Sarah on the TOC call. That's All right. It. Thank you. Yeah, that, that went really well. Um, good job on that. Thank you. Yeah, it was really good. I think everyone was understood what the assessment process was about and found it useful. Great, thanks. All right, Jerry. Hello, I don't have anything to update today. Yeah, thank you for the comments on the PR, by the way. I just saw that. <laughs> okay, let me know what you think. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Um, Emily. Um, no significant updates. Michael covered anything with the security day stuff, but um, we're continuing to move forward on that front. Actually, I didn't cover anything on the six security day. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> My apologies then. Um, so we met yesterday <laughs> and we discussed um, potential questions regarding room layout and table arrangements. Um, we're waiting to hear back from Emily, hopefully by Friday of this week, and then we can move forward with figuring things out. We discussed um, potentially reopening the security day registration back up, but that's contingent on room availability, layout, and other logistics planning. So we're kind of on hold at this point in time. Yeah, we're projecting like 150 to 170 right now, and we've asked for a little bit of a larger room um, so that we have room to spread out a little bit as we do the open spaces and other things. And then all in, we've had seven sponsors as well. So um, the CNCF is pleased with that sponsorship rate. It was able to fund most of the day. Um, so overall, the program's coming together as well. That's been announced. Um, I think we talked about that last week. <coughs> Hopefully we can get more space for everyone and then probably be able to sell about 30 to 50 more tickets. Is, is there actually an official wait list or are people just being told they can't register at the moment? I think at the moment it is like the, the folks are being told that like it's not available. Um, I can certainly look into if there is a wait list. I mean, I just want to people to at least know that they should try again later or something if they right we'll send out emails with like the you know hey we're back um but yeah contingent on being able to get a uh, larger room all right cool um amy you're next so hello you, <laughs> you guys uh, have covered all the things that i had today which was basically like fantastic job on the assessment on um tuesday and we have a lovely security day rock and rolling all right. Um, next up, Robert. Uh, just uh, helping with the OPA assessment. And uh, there's a policy working group uh, call today at 4 p.m. Pacific, if anyone's interested. All right. OK, so Christian, no updates. Um, I think we have a couple of folks on the call, but are not on the attendances. I think there's um, Kwan Yi. And Ray, any updates from you guys? Want to introduce yourself? If not, we'll carry on with the agenda. No updates for me. This is Ray. I'm just listening in. Okay. Joined a uh, 
a little bit ago, but been been kind of off and on. Sounds good. Okay. Um, all right. Let's let's go ahead then. So check in from partner six. Um, sick off policy. Um, I'm not sure, Robert, whether you wanted to say anything about um, the call you guys are having later. I no, just other than to invite folks. We we do these calls every two weeks, so not a lot uh, in terms of update from last week. Um, so today, if you have uh, anything you want to put on the agenda, either uh, add that to the Google Doc, or you can just message me here, and I'll I'll add it to the agenda for today. All right, sounds good. Um, okay, anything from Sigov Security Audit Work Group? This big data work group. All right then. Um, okay, so let's start off with uh, the next item on the list is the um, Falco review. Michael, do you wanna take that? Yep, sure. So these slides are really rough. This is kind of like our probably second draft of these. Um, so apologize for that. <laughs> but, um, you know, one thing that Chris Nova, who joined the, the Paco team recently, has been trying to encourage us to do is trying to uh, do more of our work in the open. Um, so you can kind of see these rough slides um, right now as what we're kind of thinking about for Paco and our incubation uh, requests. So essentially, if you're not familiar, and I apologize for the sirens in the background, but if you're not familiar with the incubation requirements, uh, we need to document that essentially Falk is being used in production by at least three independent end users, uh, have a healthy level of commits and activity in the project, um, ongoing flow of commits and merge contributions. Uh, and then uh, we should also have, uh, I think what's not on here, which is missing, is this due diligence done uh, as well. And so the due diligence is kind of really going through and doing a technical due diligence to make sure you have things like architecture diagrams like that as well, which we need to work on. Um, so if you're not familiar with Falco, uh, Falco is essentially container runtime security, it monitors system calls for abnormal behavior. It's essentially a uh, host intrusion detection system that's focused on container workloads. So we have some hooks into things like cryo and container D to pull back container metadata information. We'll con contact the Kubernetes master, pull back container and pod and deployment and so forth, metadata information. Uh, and then we'll link that together with the actual system calls that's going through the kernel. Uh, and basically you can say for this particular container running in this particular pod with this particular label, uh, I want to have this rule be enforced and basically alert me anytime that it makes an outbound connection to the internet or an outbound connection that's unexpected on particular ports or something like that. Uh, file IO monitoring and all those sorts of things as well. Uh, so falco.org is the website. If you're not familiar with it, uh, I would go and check it out. I'm not going to cover too much about what Falco is on, on this presentation. Um, we were joined in the sandbox in October 2018. And it was a project that was started in May of 2016. So the growth of the community has actually been really good since we joined Sandbox. Sandbox. And one of the things that I really uh, enjoy about showing those metrics is that how much it, the Sandbox process really helps the project grow. Uh, so the pre-Sandbox period is a 29th month period, uh, by the way. And then the post-Sandbox is just a 12 month period. And you can see that commit velocity has went up. Uh, the number of contributors involved in the project uh, are up. The number of companies that are contributing to the project is up. Contributors are uh, anybody that's commenting on an issue or a pull request. Um, the com we're an area that we need to improve on is the number of committers that we have from different organizations. But that's actually a criteria for uh, moving from incubation into graduation. And so that's something that we'll be looking at improving. Um, as well. And then we're also progressing along the CII, uh, uh, which is the uh, Robert, what, what does that stand for, Robert? Core Infrastructure Initiative. Yes, the Core Infrastructure Initiative. There are several levels. Um, 
to move into incubation, you don't need to have one of those levels. Uh, you just need to uh, start showing that you're uh, on the path into passing. Uh, I believe it's the criteria. Any questions so far? Um, another interesting kind of community growth. Uh, Michael? Yeah. Hi, Stan. Um, so we, we had a little bit of discussion last week on mm -hmm. um, attestation and certification um, and, you know, related to assessments. And you know, I think we've driven uh, things towards more clarity. Uh, you know, we're working on uh, you know, PRing some uh, um, you know, guidance on some of the, the, the pages to make sure that you know, this is not a certification program. This is us helping you, uh, you know, yeah. produce better, better artifacts. Um, but you know, since you're going through that journey and you're doing the CII process, I pointed to the CII process as being um, our badging and certification um, you know, yeah. backstop. Um, so, you know, I'm particularly interested in, um, you know, since we've gotten questions about, you know, uh, especially from, from um, folks interested in supporting their, their uh, business outcomes, right? And I, I have the same uh, you know, needs here at PayPal. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, if there's anything um, from a project's perspective that we can help uh, in directing you, directing projects to the CII or informing the you know, folks that, um, you know, this is the assessment, this is the journey that we're taking you on. By the way, here's more context of the broader journey that you're going to be going through uh, in the CNC. Right. Uh, you know, uh, and if you're looking for, you know, certification or your badging, that is the resource. Um, you know, I, I really appreciate that, you know, feeding that, that back. Yeah. Back. So, so this is a conversation I would love to have because I think if we went through our own journey on it as we've had CVEs opened up, we went through the security audit to find our own. We've internally within the last couple of weeks found our own potential vulnerabilities as well through our own engineering efforts. And um, that's just one aspect of security. And then there's lots of the other things that we have to go through. And it's been, um, there hasn't been like that trail map that takes you from these are the security things you need to do in sandbox these are the security things you need to do in incubation and it it's kind of tied to the cii but i feel right. like there's just a little bit of a broader context that you need of why the cii things are important right and what it gives yep. you right it, well you need security at falco.org because you have to have some sort of security response mechanism to respond to cbds and that maps into cii gold status mm -hmm. You know, twelve dot one, twelve dot two, twelve dot three. I'm just making up numbers, but that good kind answer. of guidance would be really <laughs> right. good. Yeah. Fantastic. And and part of it has been us kind of figuring out the process of the CNCF. Um, but I think overall, I think the journey has been good. I think just kind of trying to package it up for more projects to use it more in a turnkey way, I think would be good. Great. Yeah, this and, is Amy. And, yeah, I can help with that. Uh, yeah, CNCF is, is you know, going through that journey at, at the same time. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, um, it'll, it'll have a yeah. So, and you know what we typically tend to, what I've done is uh, copy the OPA folks <laughs> because they've been uh, nice. they were a very successful project, uh, and so I kind of just mirror what they do. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so I'm not going to cover these metrics too much, but you can just kind of see how like there's much more participation in the community. Uh, I think. Some other inter interesting metrics is the number of downloads and pulls that we have. Um, we have um, a lot of things that we have shipped uh, as well over this period of time. Um, and just kind of another one that we've added recently is um, gRPC based outputs. Uh, and this is important because what it gives us is the ability uh, to basically have our outputs go out to a variety of different sources. Uh, it makes it much easier so people don't have to write C++ um, as well. And then it'll just help us be able to integrate into the cloud native ecosystem a little bit better. And then from an integrations perspective, we have two that I was going to highlight around this uh, Archeant or Arsient. Um, they're uh, basically a, a consulting company out of France um, 
and they built basically an open source platform, which they call the secure cloud native fabric uh, that integrates uh, lots of different tools as well as NATS, which is another CNCF project, of course, uh, Falco, Kubebench, uh, and some other things as well, which we thought was a pretty interesting use case. And then Sumo Logic has been uh, integrating us in as well. So a um, couple of good use cases uh, of people pulling Falco into their products uh, as well, which I think the CNCF tends to encourage. Uh, it's just not about end users, but it's also about how can you help the kind of other software providers uh, build something useful around your project. And then we have a couple interesting end users of note, two of which are speaking at KubeCon. Uh, so Frame.io is one uh, where they publish Falco events into CloudWatch and then have the Lambdas react to them. They actually have a talk at the Cloud Native Security Day where they're using Lambda to basically tie into Amazon Machine Learning uh, and their application load balancers to basically use the feeds that they're getting or the logs that they're getting from their application load balancers. They feed them into Lambda, which feeds them into uh, Amazon's machine learning platform to start to find abnormalities. Uh, and it's kind of a machine learning based whack, I guess is what you would call it. Uh, so they do some pretty interesting stuff. And then Booz Allen Hamilton is also speaking at KubeCon this year as well. So this is pretty much an overview of the project and the road that we've been on over the last year in the sandbox. Um, you know, all of these end users have been kind of curated during this time. There's a few other that we've added in as well. Um, the, the interesting thing is, is like nobody told us to create an adopters.md file, and we went and created an adopters.md file, and then all of a sudden, we have uh, a whole bunch of people that are willing to put in a pull request uh, and tell you that they're using your software. <laughs> so this is like a great oh, example, really Dan, of just like the things you need to do uh, to go and get uh, to get the information that you need to be successful. There's a, another uh, kind of an interesting use case that we're seeing by a lot of people, uh, and you see two right here. Actually, these three are all kind of the same use case. Um, there's compliance requirements where you need to have a intrusion detection system. And so in the Kubernetes world, um, many people are meeting that requirement by uh, deploying Falco. And then for HIPAA compliance, CCI compliance, and other standards like that, they, they are able to uh, uh, meet that standard. So as I said, one of the things that we have to go through is this due diligence. Um, and so we need to, uh, we need to one, submit our pull request to request incubation review. Uh, and then we need to go through this uh, and kind of start to answer these questions. Um, I believe it's up, Amy, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's, I believe it's up to Joe and Liz Rice to ask Sig Security to do the due diligence. Is that correct? I think so. Okay. So it would be interesting to know if there's anyone um, on, uh, on this call and, and Sig Security in general who would want to participate in this and help us do the due diligence. It would basically just be uh, walking through a lot of this with me. Um, over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I, th I think we had um, some chatter around doing, so I'm not sure whether this is, is directly correlated with doing the security assessment. Yeah, that's the question I had. Is this separate from the security assessment? This is separate from the security assessment. And this is kind of why we've been putting off the security assessment because we have this that we have to go and do and then we have a couple releases we're trying to get out before KubeCon as well. Um, and so I don't, but it would be interesting to see is how much overlap is there in the security assessment. But the challenge is, is for us, the security assessment is not a requirement, as I understand it, for us to move into incubation. And so if we have to go and put project cycles somewhere, and I have to put project cycles into doing this due diligence so that we can move up to incubation. Now, I would be more than willing to have the spreadsheet of the security assessment next to us as we do this. 
and see how many of those boxes that we can check and, and make sure that we're meeting those criteria in the security assessment. And then maybe we'd say we're 80% of the way towards getting it done. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Robert, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I, and I, Justin. I, I certainly agree that if it's not a requirement for CNCF, then you know, you're, you're kind of a, a fork in the road. So I do like the idea of kind of consolidating the process in a, in a quick in a spreadsheet view so that you can quickly uh, crosswalk that to what you're doing for the due diligence. So I'm happy to provide that. Um, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll summarize what I, what I think the costs are for the security assessment based on the docs that are checked into the repo. And um, okay. yeah, if you and I want to jump on a quick call and crosswalk that to think, I think we could present that back to this group and say, here's, here's what we're really asking folks to do above and beyond the due diligence process. Yeah, okay. That sounds good. Yeah, that sounds reasonable to me. Okay. Um, and then I'll just put it back out there. If there's anyone who's interested in helping with the due diligence, um, would appreciate uh, the help there once we make the request to the COC. I'm just curious, have we done this with uh, another project before? This is, this I don't. This time. I think this is going to be the first time I've seen um, Sig Storage do it for uh, TKIV or TKV, um, but I think OPA would have been the last one, and OPA it was OPA did it before the new guidelines came in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or the TOC member decided to do it themselves. Um, not sure which. Is this for the project to go into incubation? Yes, that's correct. Um, Michael, did you have, were you done with the slides? Yeah, no, I'm done. Sorry, I had lost my connection, but I was, I was done with the slides. Right. Um, so I guess we will follow up on that. Um, I'll start the call. Any other questions related to uh, Falco? All right, then. Um, let's move on to the next item, which is a quick one. Um, this one is actually on some of the updates I did to the README. So I'm going to share my screen really quick. Um, but this is just uh, a quick call to people to check this out. Um, I've redone the README page so that we compressed, like we moved a lot of the stuff up, like the meeting times. We've added the new members page over here, and then we've squashed some of this. This, um, yeah. So this is um, PR two eighty. So if you you have some extra time to take a look and provide some feedback on this. Thanks, man. Looking good. All right. And next under this, we have um, supply chain security. Um, Santiago? Yes, uh, this is also a quick one. Um, I spoke with Sarah, Sarah about how to uh, move forward with the project. Uh, I originally thought that SIG Security was its own GitHub organization, so we could just transfer the internal repository and take it from there and have everything like self-contained. Uh, but SIG Security is just a repository under the CNCF, uh, CNCF organization. So what I wanted to know uh, was whether we wanted to move the repository to the CNCF and uh, do we have the jurisdiction to do so as SIG Security or did we want to 
either transfer it as a submodule or just copy files over a separate subdirectory as a pull request? Or what is the consensus here? How, how, how big is the repo? Uh, it is not too big. It's, uh, I'd say it's a couple of files, less than, less than 50 for sure. I mean, if it's kind of small, I think maybe, um, doing it as a, as a sub directory might make more sense rather than but um uh okay uh that was that was my impression as well i didn't want to jump the gun just yet because i didn't know if there was anything fishy there or if anybody had failed had an, had an idea uh my understanding is that we will eventually want to make this a uh, website that uh, hostable so probably want a separate repository, but I think we can take it from here. I'll, I'll make the pull request this week and uh, probably we'll be able to discuss it. Uh, I mean, yeah, we can always discuss it on the, on the pull request, but okay. I think yeah, I don't want to reasonable. eventually have a separate repository, but okay, sounds great. All right. Um, I think that's all that we had on the agenda today. Um, is there any topic that someone wanted to bring up on top of that? Did we dive into the OPA presentation at all yesterday? I uh, joined a couple minutes uh, late, but we, I think we we're just going through check-ins. Um, I, I don't think we talked uh, more about it, but um, we could definitely let's share, I think, the slide that we presented. Every... Sure. I, I... I want to say one thing really quick, um, which is that I think that the model we had where the project effectively presented one half of the slide, mm -hmm. and then we, the assessors, presented the other half, I think that worked well. Uh, did others mm -hmm. agree with that? Yeah, yeah, that was great. Yeah, yeah it felt like uh, you know, it was really centered on the project, but uh, you know, it had a good balance of, hey, uh, you know, we also sort of back this up and I thought the discussion uh, really supported that, that, um, you know, we, unlike, uh, you know, our first time through, uh, you know, with OPA, we had a, a few more um, uh, sort of findings along the way. And, you know, those were referenced as, you know, supporting the journey and, you know, helping, uh, um, you know, drive towards uh, more secure outcomes in, you know, cloud native ecosystem and, uh, yeah, couldn't help hope for, for, for better calls than that. So I just had a quick question on the pull request itself. Uh, so what, what's the next step for that? Uh, I've seen there are a bunch of approvals on it. Uh, what's, what's the next step now? I think it gets merged um, once is we're Ash, sure is there's Ash, is Ash, is Ash. Yeah, once we're we're sure there aren't any other issues. Um, maybe there's been enough review now that we should go ahead and merge. I've been um, sick the last I don't know week ish or so, and so um, it's part of the reason why I didn't do the the right side of the presentation. Sarah was kind enough to do that. Um, but I've also been hoping that I would have a moment to be okay and go through and read it as well. But I think uh, maybe we need not wait on that. Maybe I should. Do, we should just go ahead and merge it. Um, there, there was did, there, the, the the TIC suggested that people should look at the PR and comment on it. So I guess we should maybe give them a few days for if there's any external comments. I see. Okay. Yeah, I, I did notice that, that you and others um, caught some really important little problems in there. So I think the process of reviewing it has been very helpful too, that it, it hasn't just been looks good to me, looks good to me, but people have actually 
had legitimate um, things that they've seen by looking at it. So. Yeah, that thanks, thanks, Justin. So yeah, if you guys have any comments on it, uh, yeah, please update the PR and I can address those is that. All right. Um, anything else that we want to bring up? Nothing on mine. Um, Michael, could you link your slides into the notes? Uh, yeah, I can. All right then. Um, I guess we'll we'll give back another fifteen minutes of time or more. <laughs> <laughs> right. Awesome. Thanks, Brendan. All right. Thank sure you, everyone. Have Thank you. Bye. Okay, bye. 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 Bye.